through all of the work that you've done, essentially, what truths, uh, what have you learned about yourself uh, through your craft? I think was ultimately. Uh, <laughs> well, one most important thing, which happened only about 20 years ago, I've been an actor for 52 years now, was um, to not to be afraid. Because I was fearful for years and years and years. We, Dan and I have talked a lot about this. Um, I was afraid of being myself. I was a great faker, but then a lot of English actors are. We fake brilliantly. Um, and then a, a series of things happened, jobs, directors I worked with, and I found that I could stop faking it and the sky didn't fall on my head. So getting rid of fear, and that's what I say to all acting students when I talk to them. It's the most important thing they have to free themselves of because they are not expressing themselves when they are afraid of being themselves. So I've learned that. And um, as for all those roles you mentioned, uh, what I learned 20, 25 years ago was that all of these people already exist inside me. Doesn't matter how unspeakable they are, how unpleasant. They are there and you have to find all those elements internally. Do you think coming to grips with the fear was something that uh, you just gained from, uh, you know, as, as you aged or do you, was, it, was it because of your work? No, it was just good, happy coincidence that I, I worked with two directors almost back to back who were saying to me the same thing. I mean, one of them I worked with who actually said to me, this was at the Young Vic in London in, a, in an American play. He said to me, stop, 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 stop. This is not the Royal Shakespeare Company. You can't bring those bad habits here. Oh, wow. Woo! Damn, snap. Uh, <laughs> do you feel like you're, okay, good, excellent. Ne next question. Hello. Hello, I'm Jim Marsh, and my question is, um, if you were given the opportunity to be in King Lear, and the two roles to be filled were Lear and Kent, and if you were going to be filling these with Ian McCallion, which would you choose? Did you catch that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, what do you think? Oh, I think I know what you Well, I, I mean, the fact is, I'm probably too old to play Kent now. I thought you, if you said Lear or Gloucester, it might make sense because uh, my best friend, who is an actor in England, um, uh, is two years older than me and he is about to play Gloucester. Um, in fact, in the same theatre where we did Johnson over Jordan in Leeds. Uh, Gloucester is a great role. Kent is a magnificent role. Um, I've been in the play once and I played the Duke of Cornwall. The great thing about the Duke of Cornwall is that he gets killed before the interval and you get to go home. <laughs> Yeah, it is. You'll never see actors who die before the interval take the curtain off. Um, you know, it's like there are all these kind of you know rules and choices that you would never know about. For instance, there's a character of Friar Lawrence in Romeo and Juliet who always wears a long friar's robe down to his ankles. Um, and uh, 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 I'm just trying to think what the choice is about that. Uh, uh, Oh no, it's a choice of, uh, if you want to play Friar Lawrence or Mercutio, you get the choice of playing Mercutio and getting to go home before the interval, or playing Friar Lawrence and keeping your trousers on. <laughs> That's sometimes all it comes down to. <laughs> all right, great, thank you. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> all right, well, I just want to ask about, uh, what do you like? which role do you like better, Masterminds or the Page Master? <laughs> well, uh, Page Master, as I recall, was an animated movie. Um, no, that was live action. What do you mean? I've been wrong. I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> Why are you screwing with Patrick Stewart? Do you know how you would get ripped apart by all these people, like, like the freaking Walking Dead? I'm going to take, take his photographs so I'll know him. Would you, re could you repeat the question? I said, uh, what, what would you say you like better doing, Mastermind or the Page Master? Which did I enjoy? Well, I said, as I think I said, Page Master was an animated movie. So I was just a voice in that. But um, uh, Masterminds, not only was I in, but I co-produced that movie as well. And we really, the writer and the director and myself, fought 
thought that we were making the next Home Alone. I thought we were going to be zillionaires. <laughs> and it opened in LA on Friday night and closed Sunday. <laughs> Well, if it makes you feel any better, I like it as a child. Hi, guys! Woo! Woo! A couple more questions. Yes, what is your name, sir? Steve. Hey, Steve, what's your question? Uh, well, you zipped by this earlier, but uh, i like to say congratulations on your long overdue knighthood. Is this a big deal to you, and uh, how, how, how does that process even work? And secondly, why is your son so much taller than you? <laughs> Those are all weird but fair questions. Well, I think Dan should answer the last question. I don't think that's true at all. I think if anyone should be answering that question, it should be you. <laughs> Uh, the first question was about being knighted. Like, what was the process like? And, 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 oh, His first oh. hilarious question was, is it a big deal to you? <laughs> oh, you know what I mean, knighted? Yeah, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, thanks, well, Liz. Um, <laughs> I, I think his exact words were at the time when the Queen lowered the sword when she said, I think you have knighted the British realm. He said, and what <laughs> Forgive me, but I don't agree with you, sir. I thought the timing of it was perfect. If it didn't happen any sooner, I would have felt like a fraud. I really do think it was perfect, and others have said what you said, but uh, that, that's, for me, not accurate. Um, yes, it's a great, great honor and distinction, and I'm really proud of it, and I know some actors have turned them down. Uh, I know one who turned uh, Nigel down three times. Um, oh. I can't say. Steve, it was Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you didn't want it. <laughs> I wasn't even from England. You look funny. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I can die now! Oh my god, that was a good one! That was awesome! Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I did one of those Q&A things in one of the Sunday papers recently. You know, the same day I asked people the same set of questions and, and one of the questions is how would you like to be remembered and people give like, very serious, you know, solemn answers and, and I said for being funny but it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, I mean, Laurence Olivier said um, there is far more satisfaction to be got out of making an audience laugh than making them weep. And I increasingly, as I get older, come to feel that is True. I love to hear the sound of a live audience laughing, which you, of course, are very familiar with. Uh, well, sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, sadly. Uh, thank you. Is your question sufficiently? Okay, great. Uh, uh, we think this probably has to be. This is the last question. Yes, sir. What is what is your question? Oh, this better be good. <laughs> the pressure's on now, man. Actually, it's nothing near as poignant. But um, when you did Robin Hood Men in Tights, what was it like? <laughs> Families like Mel Brooks and Carrie Elwood. Yes, was it like working with Mel Brooks for Robin Hood Men in Tights? Uh, uh, I was only, I did about six days work on that, and I simply remember starting laughing at about six o'clock in the morning, and, and not stopping until they called. That's a wrap at the end. Um, I, I mean, it wasn't just Mel, but there were some very funny people in that movie, and um, I don't know how the movie. Get, I don't know how his movies get made. <laughs> You know, and, and, and there's, you know, unlike uh, uh, Ricky, where it's all scripted, uh, he improvises and loves to improvise, and I'm happy to say 
that I have one moment on film where I improvise something that actually made Mel Brooks laugh. Um, uh, the, with the line was something like, uh, uh, well it was, it was Dan's line just now. I had to say to Mel, who was playing um, Friar Topman, um, uh, who uh, practiced uh, Greece in a little tent to one side, um, uh, I said to him, uh, thank you, Father, and he said, Rabbi, and that was the line, that was all it was. And I said, thank you, Father, and he said, Rabbi, and I said, whatever. 